Morning guys. Beautiful morning out here again. We're uh, over at the trail where the into the cabin. We're doing a little bit of high speed here today. We're I gotta check both lines. The uh, because I just I only got one day this time to do it. And then on Friday it'll be the same thing because we got granddaughter's birthday down in Brandon. Um, not the blondie, it's the redhead, Michaela. Happy birthday, Michaela, if you watch this. And uh, so anyways, I'm gonna get going. I can't talk too much. Battery is a little low. So anyways, it's a beautiful day. Just uh, about eight degrees above zero Fahrenheit. And it is perfect. Back to a little bit of winter weather anyways. Alrighty. See you down the trail, hopefully. Hey guys, I was just, uh, I'm just at this fisher set right over here and I just got to the top of the hill and there was a, a wolf standing right at the bottom here and he just took off through here and went out that way. Anyways, don't have any wolf sets over this way. I don't ever see wolf tracks here, so. But, anyways, we'll uh, keep underway here. Alrighty. I'm probably coming in to try and figure out a way to steal my bait. That'd be pretty cool to come back next time and see a timber wolf hanging in that 160 uh, Belial. <laughs> yeah, good thinking. Later. Hey guys, here we're at the, uh, will be the last Fisher Martin set for this first part of the trail. And get something in here. But this box is set upside down and he's there we go. Oh. Martin, cool. And I uh, get this trap replaced with this one. Right on. Gotta love it. You know, any Martin I catch from now on in these Fisher traps is just a, a bonus. Although, you know, I'm not really hyped up about a female Martin like that. I just want to try and snag those couple of fisher that are running around. But if I don't get them pretty soon, I'll pull all these traps out because I don't... Well, the season will end in two weeks. But I don't want to keep catching my females. Alrighty. See you down the trail. Hey guys, we're down uh, just about a half mile past where I caught that last black wolf. Just at the end of the trail and turning around here, but... you know. There's a pretty picture there. Nice looking Martin hanging suitcased in a 160 Belial. I'll go change over this trap and we'll move on down. Pretty cool. To Martin today. Well, cool to a point, I guess. Didn't really want to get any more Martin, but. Whatever. I guess if I'm trying for Fisher, I'm going to end up with a few more Martins. No, that's not Fisher's. I don't have any trap left. I took three down off the shed to bring with me and I left them sitting on my porch when I went and got the bait. So anyways, and he ain't looking like something I'm going to get out of there. But I'll try or else I'll just pull this trap right now. Alrighty, later. Hey guys, we're at uh, no, I guess probably, I think there's just two more fisher sets after this. Um, 
check the dude in here. Dude's good. Here's another, another one of those goofy things you catch every once in a while. It looks like I'm zooming in just a sec. Two flying squirrels in the same trap at the same time. Now this does happen. I think this is, I caught the same thing about two years ago. And then I've probably caught done it four, three or four times in my life where you get them. I don't know what they're doing, just, I guess, trying to be the first one into the, the bait, I guess, but. Flying squirrels are on the move lately. I've been getting a few. Nothing like my best, or I guess you'd call worst year for catching them. I used to keep a track of everything I caught. And I think one, one winter I caught, uh, this was up in Hiawatha, maybe the third year I was trapping, I think I caught 87 flying squirrels that year. And it's just, it's weird because it's something people don't even really know are around here because they only come out at night. And uh, anyways, another double on the flying squirrels. Now I've gone through almost all the wolf snares, still not a, a single wolf track on the line other than that one, you know, that wolf I saw on the very south end of the, like that, that fisher set where I saw the wolf was on the extreme south boundary of my line. And, uh, you know, like I said, I th uh, when I first saw that wolf, I thought it was a lynx. Um, just because of the way it was, it was moving through the, the bush there. But then it turned sideways. I saw the long tail and, and its head. So, but anywho, we've got to get these squirrels out of here because i got no trap to replace these. And I don't worry about breaking the... The uh, skin on, or the meat on them things. The uh, I have seen probably half a dozen lynx traps or tracks through the travel so far today, and uh, several marten tracks. So that's good. See you down the trail, boys. Hey, everybody. I'm on my way back. I'm about six miles from the truck. This is a uh, the lakes. It's called Fish Lake. I just wanted to show you guys from you know down. South who've never had to deal with slush. I know you hear us talking about it all the time, but when you're crossing lakes, you see right there, you can't see it very good, but you're gonna see it as soon as I zoom in. You just wanna watch for stuff like that. When you see that right there, see that is a sure sign that there's, well, obviously there's slush there because the snow is actually caved in. It's all the way over to there. That hole back into the lake right here, you can see where it's caving in all over. And the slush actually comes, it'll come right up to the shore and you can, it's right over there too. But what happens is there's a couple different reasons that you'll get slush. Now the number one reason on a little lake like this in getting closer is there's a spring on the bottom and if it's only a couple of feet deep it'll actually push water up you know and create a hole through the ice but the main reason on lakes you get slush is when you get snow on top and it gets too heavy and then the ice cracks and the weight of the snow pushes the ice down and water starts bubbling up and as it bubbles up, the weight on top of, you know, that the snow absorbs all that water and gets even heavier and heavier. And then it just keeps sinking and sinking. And on a year like this, where, you know, it's not really, there's not enough snow to really get you in trouble. Although if I tried to cross that with a sleigh on the back, I would be stuck for sure. Um, Without my sleigh, I would just zoom right through that. It would leave an awful mess behind me. There'd probably be a 15-foot rooster tail of water. Um, but, you know, that's just something you got to keep your eye out. You can see there's another little spot over there. And I would bet money in the back corner over there. Because this is here west to east, like this. And the wind blows here almost always west to east. 
and so the other end of the lake over there is going to have a higher build up of snow so a lot of times when there's um, you know deeper snow you can't even see the slush it's just you'll be going along and all of a sudden and it will literally if you're pulling a sleigh it will stop you within you know a hundred feet if you uh, don't got the power to get through that and you know you can imagine with a rooster tail of oh, sorry for the sunlight a rooster tail of slush flying up that sleigh would fill up in no time and then it would weigh about 800 pounds and you are going absolutely nowhere with with that much weight in your sleigh and trying to pull it through the water so anyways just wanted to show you that's what you know when we were all talking about slush and everything that's what you watch out for when you see that you know when you start to sink down you know you get that sinking feeling because you know and that's when you you'll see this is that's why i carry this uh little shovel with me this time of year if you do end up getting stuck in the slush what you do is you get your machine turned around shovel all the slush out so that it's just water there and then your snow machine can run through that because there's no you know stickiness involved the slush just kind of you know holds you up there and you get in absolutely no traction so you clean out your your back trail all the way back to where the ice is dry and then you're uh, you're good to go but anyways the day ended up just the two martin not what i was expecting or what i was hoping for but again all the way around by the time I get home, it'll be, or back to the truck, it'll be 59 miles I put on the skidoo. And not a wolf track other than that one I saw right in the bottom edge. So, I don't know if I cleaned them out, which I would be just as happy with, or if I just scared them out. But if I did that, there's somebody else's problem to deal with. So, if they stay away, the deer and the moose and the beavers in the spring will just have a nicer time of it. Alrighty, later, keep the boots dry. Okay, I'm gonna show you here, see the uh, little tracks all over here, all over there, going all up there on this side here. They're all back there. You see all going across the trail and everything. You know, you see that many bird tracks in the snow this time of year. This is a you know, obviously a flock of sharp-tailed grouse, which is something we don't see a lot of in the bush here. I mean, there's lots of them out in the prairie land, but, you know, as long as they survive with all the coyotes. And, uh, but, like I said, you see that many tracks. Usually grouse are by themselves, like rough grouse or spruce grouse are by themselves this time of year. So this will be a, a flock of uh, sharp tails. I don't know if I'll run into them or not, but I just wanted to show you the tracks. Like I said, they're just all over the place through here. Alrighty. Later. Yeah, I'm just about halfway back to the truck from the last video, and I just want to show you this. You got a, this has come by since I was in there, or since I went in earlier, and it's a, a big buck mink track and you look right here he slides the last four feet over to the trail you think he's a otter the crazy little bugger and so he hopped all the way through there and then slid across the trail and started doing his little run all the way through and all the way headed up towards that beaver house over there I wish this was still part of my trap line. There's like, okay, so there's that beaver house right there. And then right back where I came from, there's, if I can find it right there, there's another one right there, alive. And then there's another one right on the other side of that big spruce tree. I just can't quite see it from where I'm standing. 
just a oh, big grassy meadow joining them all. Anyways, again, see down the trail boys, keep your boots dry.